here from Speedwell. And today I'll be presenting on brand analytics and what metrics you should be measuring. To kick off, I'll just um, do a bit of an overview of my background. So I studied at ACU, a Bachelor of Business, and then I moved on to Zernico Australia as the Marketing and Business Development Coordinator, where I worked with over 90 companies uh, in regards to award submissions, marketing, as well as um, operations, as well as getting their house in order to uh, expand and grow and do a whole bunch of different things. I then moved on to Eager Boys Pizza, where I was a part of the e-commerce team, where we did an iOS and Android app, as well as managed all the content offers and promotions. I then went on to South Bank Corporation, and South Bank Corp, Corp owned and run South Bank Parklands, and I was a part of the team that managed over 140 events per year. From there, I went to Brisbane Marketing as the Digital Project Manager. Brisbane Marketing is Tourism Brisbane, so essentially Brisbane Marketing is um, there as a destination to attract visitors, attract investors, conferences, major events, as well as students to Brisbane. From there, I went to develop coffee in an e-commerce role as the digital marketing manager. As the digital marketing manager, I also managed all branding, promotions, packaging, and digital operations for develop coffee. And I also introduced them to the digital scorecard. From there, I went to Speedwell, which is my current role as the digital marketing technologist, where I helped I help brands unlock their digital potential through getting the best out of their CMS, as well as um, helping them with chatbots, integrating CRM systems, and a whole raft of projects, which I'll cover off in my next slide. So projects that I've been involved in and managed is marketing automation, sales pipeline dashboards, chatbots, iOS and Android apps, tourism website, e-commerce websites, CRM integrations, Sitecore websites, Drupal websites, Cantico websites, WordPress websites, award platforms, so the Lord Mayor Business Awards, which I managed for over five years at Prism Marketing, and then also UX design projects. So doing UX reviews and SEO audits and analysis for clients to assist them to optimize their whole entire uh, digital journey. So today I'm going to be talking about brand analytics and your brand is actually the most critical asset a company can have due to its ability to establish and sustain relationships with your customers. A brand's value it, as a marketer right now is very important as the activities that you do right now is critical for future growth and future brand recognition that your company is doing. As leadership teams around the world look to cut expenses, you, make, you need to make sure that the marketing activity that you're doing right now is business critical and is actually reaching the right audiences with hyper tailored and targeted messages to deliver on the commercial business outcomes of your organization. So how do you do that? Essentially, what I uh, like to do with my clients is do a bit of an audit of what's working and what's not do a bit of analysis of um, their customer journeys and lower the barriers of, and blockers which are preventing their customers to convert. From a marketing ROI perspective, um, there's a lot of people in market at the moment that aren't doing it right and are failing. So they're not getting the right conversion rate that they're after. And today I'm going to go through what metrics you need to measure to ensure that your business is successful in the, in the future and comes out stronger after COVID-19. 
Brands that activate in the market, like I said, will emerge uh, stronger. And we have seen tough times and economic climates such as this, especially through the, the um, economic crisis, which was uh, a few years ago. So what do customers do to engage their audiences? At the end of the day, they need to increase brand perception because brand perception is about relevancy in the eyes of your customers. On to the metrics. So um, from left to right, essentially um, the metrics that I put into a marketing scorecard are market size, so an analysis of the landscape. Going into that, I then go into market share. So what percentage of the market could I potentially market to, to essentially target and also do business within that market? The question I also ask is where's your income coming from and how well is it growing over time? I also look at what are your best um, and worst performing products and then look at potentially bundling products together to shift them and move them on so you don't have inventory issues. On to the next phase is to, uh, is to understand the why. Why are we in business and who are we marketing to? So it's about understanding audiences. So who are your key audiences and segments and what are they doing right now? What have they been doing in the last three to six months? And what are the data and trends and analytics showing you? On to the next phase, I like to look at um, the sales um, frequency and sales cycle. So what's the frequency of an audience? How many points of contact does your sales team or marketing team or email nurturing campaign need to do before someone takes a business action in the form of transacting or inquiring with your business? Uh, quite often, um, the evaluation process also um, looks at what channels are both working and not working and doubling down on the channels that resonate with your audience because at the end of the day, you're only, you're only going to be spending money and targeting customers based on the channels that they're already on. Other metrics you also should um, put in your benchmark report is the return on advertising spend as well as uh, how much it costs to acquire new customers, how much it costs to retain customers, and what's your current loyalty and retention rate. So a quick way to look at that is um, email subscribers. So essentially looking at how your list is growing over time and whether you're retaining those people who originally subscribed. With email marketing, it's, um, it's a great tool for converting um, subscribers into customers. It's also a great way to improve your brand relevancy and also to be a thought leader in your market. When I talk about customers and perception, quite often uh, we recommend that customers uh, go out and do a survey and reach out to their customers based on um, key criteria that they're wanting to learn about them. Net Promoter Score is one of those ways that you can ask your audience, would they refer you to their friends and family? And that's on the basis of service, product and offering. Focus at the end of the day is a mindset and understanding where you should spend your money is critical, especially in this marketplace. Understanding exactly what you need to do and then doubling down on that is what you need to do going forward. Mindset means valuing what you do, your products and your services. Because at the end of the day, 
the difference between a high value and a low value product is what is perceived in the market. If you value yourself more, you're going to come across as someone or business that has a higher value product. Okay, so going into some measurement fundamentals. Um, luckily now we have enterprise marketing platforms in the market, um, which allow us to measure and track the customer through the whole sales journey or user journey. I personally use Cycle, which enables me to see a 360 view of the customer. And from that, I then um, generate generally these four um, metrics. So what's the customer acquisition cost, which is marketing costs divided by total customers acquired, lifetime value, so it's the customer lifetime value, which is gross profit from all historic trans transactions for an individual customer. The next one is return on marketing investment. So it's sales growth minus marketing costs times 100 divided by marketing investment. The next one is, which is really, really critical, is conversion rate. Because quite often people don't have a, tra a traffic problem because they can purchase advertising to, to attract new customers to their website. Quite often it's a conversion rate issue. Conversion rate is the total number of checkout page views divided by the total number of conversions. Like I said before, perception affects buyer's intent. Brand perception directly affects motivation and intent to purchase. As humans, we, when presented with new situations, our brains makes predictions based on past experiences, takes, takes action based on those hypotheses and perceives the result and adjusts it based on these hypotheses. So that's why it's so important to have Google reviews, social proof, pain, and resolve those pain points of your customer journey and website and customer service, and also really ensure that you're providing the best user experience. Because user experience is the direct correlation to brand value and brand perception. For every second that the page loads and the customer has to wait, is a, literally a percentage of your conversion rate with, that will decline. Moving on to Google Analytics and the, and the connected customer. Like I said before, we're um, in a world where we can track every single metric, action and interaction that a customer has with our brand, which means that if someone downloads a webinar, attends an event, clicks on a call to action, likes something on Facebook, checks in, searches for something in your website, interacts with your website through a chatbot, or uh, downloads um, an article from a, a newsletter, we can track that whole user journey. So SEO metrics that are essential for your scorecard. So essentially we've got load time. So like I said before, load time um, affects user experience and has a flow on effect to brand value and perception. Um, dwell time. So the average session duration, you've got average time on page. You've also got percentage of returning visitors. By fixing your leaky bucket um, of a website essentially means to make sure that people are, re are returning to your website. What I mean is a lot of people have a conversion issue whereby a lot of people come through as a new visitor. <laughs>
Ways to do that is also through email subscription and tracking email subscriber rate is also um, of value because a lot of email subscribers often transact to paying customers. Ways to also convert is via uh, push notifications. Um, so essentially, as you do a notification, the user is then notified of any new content products or services that you've just released on your website. Like I said before, you can set up Google Analytics in your search console to track uh, interactions for messenger chat, as well as um, tracking information regarding referral traffic. Because at the end of the day, the more backlinks that you're getting organically, it will increase the amount of traffic that you're getting over time. And a bit of analysis that I like to do as well is a bit of a cha uh, channel analysis. To, so understand where people are coming from, an audience analysis to see how they're tracking month on month, as well as um, looking at social media on uh, if Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn is your main social uh, platform that is essentially getting people to your website for conversion. A bounce rate uh, for organic traffic. Um, from a benchmark perspective, we generally look at uh, 50 to 60%. Anything um, above that, um, your website definitely needs improvements and uh, you need to optimize it. If your web, if your web page loads slowly, you're going to have a higher bounce rate. If the content that does not um, resonate with the user, you'll also have a higher bounce rate. So at the end of the day, when you're creating content, you need to answer the intent of what the user needs. If you're not answering those questions, they will bounce and potentially um, not refer your website to their network. From a, a page per session uh, metric perspective, um, anything that is two to five pages per session um, is great. For websites that are only sitting at that one to 1.5, definitely need improvement um, because quite often it means that um, the person is not um, using enough internal links, so hyperlinks to other content and other um, products and services to keep the users on your website so they will eventually transact. Looking at the behavioral flow in GA is also a great way to um, look at ways to op optimize your website and those pages that are critical for conversion. What businesses really need to focus on is switching from the time-sucking um, tasks to profit-building activities. To increase productivity, reduce wastage and grow your business is the best way to essentially increase your brand value, your brand worth and success of your business. And to do that, like I said before, you need to be laser focused in what you're doing and make sure that you have the right metrics in the form of a scorecard to do that. So what does a scorecard look like? Typically when I present scorecards to clients, it has a combination of uh, key performance indicators on the left hand side, which details um, activities and goals that they're wanting to achieve that will align to their commercial business outcomes. As you can see here, there's an array and list of um, those indicators on the left hand side, and then it's measured month by month and then a quarter goal. Down the bottom there, it shows what the cur uh, current colors represent. Green means that um, they met their goal um, by 90%. Yellow means 70% of the goal and red is less than 70%.
it's really good to set these key performance indicators to ensure that they're aligning to your, your business um, and what your C-suite or leadership team is wanting to achieve. Um, when creating goals, make sure that they're SMART goals. Um, it's just a given. So moving on, I just wanted to wrap up by um, saying these are my key strategy tips um, for what you can do in the next 30 to 90 days to actually get a decent outcome for your business. So it's having a marketing plan that strategically aligns to your C-suite objectives. It's creating and publishing a mix of unique hub, hero and hygiene content. If you wanna know about uh, those terms and methodologies, essentially it's Google's content marketing um, guide that they put out a few years ago, which addresses the types of content that people can publish. Um, thirdly, of course, track and measure your goals um, in Google Analytics and also keep abreast of your engagement rates for social media and also your websites. Um, as for content, it's really easy to create a content calendar. It saves a whole bucket load of time to schedule out all your content for the week beforehand and then um, put in um, reminders in your diary to update that each week. Um, five is understanding your, your audience and your why. Your why is why you get out of bed every day. It's to make an impact with your community, to sell those products that influence um, someone's routine, someone's day, someone's family. Six, run tests. Uh, these days we have uh, an array of tools that allow you to um, test content, test time of day, schedule content, um, and it's a great way to learn and optimize how you interact with your audiences. Seven, uh, connect your social data with CRM and website data to, to essentially get that 360 view of your customers so it aligns better and you can do strategies and activity that actually have better cut through based on data. Um, like I said, only focus your time on top performing platforms. Um, have a plan for negative feedback. Um, we do live in a world where there is trolls and there are negative people. So having a plan for that will um, be great in the long term because your team will know how to react and reply to certain feedback via social media or publicly. Um, I just highly, highly recommend it. Number 10, never turn silent. So as for SEO best practices, uh, Google actually recommends publishing regular content. It also helps with um, social media as well because the social media platforms actually um, give you credit and value and recognition for uh, publishing on a regular schedule. 11, be an early adapter for new social media uh, functionality. Example for Instagram is IGTV. Um, content creators that are using IGTV are getting a lot more reach as well as changing their type of content from short form to long form, which allows people to really be on that platform, understand um, their brand, as well as uh, consume content based on a playlist of videos. 12 is utilize local SEO. Uh, quite often um, and a lot of the time, if you look at uh, where people have come in from and the search terms that they've come in on, a lot of the time the uh, search terms have changed to be um, local cafe near me rather than a brand term or a particular um, location. So um, it's utilizing local SEO to your advantage to ensure that you're capturing those audiences. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have a great day. If you'd like to get in contact with me, feel free to reach out via the Spearwell website. I publish articles and content all the time about marketing 
and how to engage your, your audiences. Um, I also am very active on social media, so feel free to, at, to contact me or follow me via Twitter or LinkedIn. Via Twitter, my handle is BrisbaneJohn87. Uh, for Speedwell's corporate account, it's Speedwell Corp. And uh, below is my information regards to LinkedIn. So um, have a great day and all the very best.